what's up everybody and welcome to itg daily the show that brings you the hottest in gaming news i'm drew bosley you can find me on twitter at artistic gamer 28 and that's the one the only scott savage he's back you can find him on twitter at ta savage scott <laughs> what's happening dude we we're we we're just talking how tired we were and now we come on and it's just <laughs> It's just a new day. Let's go, buddy. <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. It's funny the way the, the camera gives you that bolt of energy. Absolutely. What's happening? Anything new and exciting? What have you been playing? Oh, not exactly. Uh, I'm on some uh, Death's Gambit, it's known as. Uh, yeah, I can't get into it because of uh, review pending. But sure. <laughs> it's we'll been fun out. getting into some new games. Yeah, well, we'll be finding that here very shortly on that one. But, dude, coming up on today's show, where you can find it over at InsideTheGame.ca, podcast services and TV streaming networks around the globe. Today's show involves Netflix, moves to the video game space, and now sees them buying studios. Yeah, we'll be oh. talking about that latest purchase. People Can Fly looks to make smaller games. They're looking to step it back a bit from AAA down into the world of AA which um, seems like a weird move, but we'll talk about that one as well. And lastly, yeah. well, far from lastly, actually, we got a loaded show. Dude, there's a ton of stuff going on today. But either way, <laughs> Valve is looking at another VR headset, maybe something in the world of wireless. Ooh. Oh, okay. Well, it's long. It's a little overdue. Which makes uh, a ooh. new fighter has entered the arena. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, let's get let's get going because we, I got a lot to say today. So, Netflix makes its first gaming acquisition in Oxenfree developer Night School Studios. Dude, the team behind Oxenfree and the upcoming title Oxenfree Two is on its way not too far out uh, at this point just got purchased by netflix that's right netflix is acquiring night school studio developer of the 2016 narrative adventure game oxen free and the upcoming se sequel oxen free 2 in a statement night school studio explained that this came about as a result of many discussions at the team about where gaming is headed while also noting the development while will continue in Oxen Free 2, as previously announced. Quote, our explorations and narrative gameplay in Netflix track record of supporting diverse storytellers was such a natural pairing. It felt like both teams came to the conclusion instinctively. End quote. Night nice School, that was from the Night nice School co-founder, Sean <laughs> Crankle. You know, that gives me just, just one flash of worry because Netflix has a... There's a weird trend of uh, canceling things that are really good right after the first season. Ah, that, well, you know, that's a good point. But it also says here, <laughs> well, quote, we'll continue working with developers around the world and hiring the best talent in the industry to deliver a great collection of exclusive games designed for every kind of gamer and every level of play. Writes Netflix VP of Game Development, Mike Verdu. You might recall, Mike, we actually talked about him not too long ago. The fact that he came from Facebook but the Oculus yeah. side of things, as well as EA, the mobile division. So now he's swept in over at Netflix and is now looking to buy studios. Scott, the thing that kind of, the first thing that popped in my head was Oxenfree 1, we already have, we've been playing that. Oxenfree 2 is coming. Will we now see a Netflix animated something, oh. like adaptation you know, of the video game into the world? I think of that would work. I think that would work really well in this case because Oxen Free was, I don't want to, it's not quite a, a point and click. It's not something that I see running terribly difficult or terribly sure. well on yeah. Netflix. It seems like it's a safe bet, but yeah, if they expanded that story in a way with this, some alternate side stories going on, I think that would really enrich that universe. I didn't play Oxen Free myself, but I did watch a roommate go through it yeah. and it has a lot of, very interesting very compelling storytelling i heard it's all about the story in those games actually and the fact that when you start oh, yeah. talking to one character that character will still continue talking even if you like walk away then you come back and you'll be <laughs> you'll catch them in the back of the, like in mid-sentence already can like continuing that conversation yeah it sounds really really cool uh just one of those things i was on too many other things at the time at the time that, that came out that uh, i never got myself over to that one but yeah it kind of lines me up with like stranger things right stranger things had the yeah, tv show aspect combination and then, yeah, into video games. So are we going to get a Oxen Free Originals over in the world of Netflix? I guess that's, uh, dude, I'm calling it. I'm telling you, that's going to happen. I'm calling it right now. <laughs> yeah, well, I hope so, actually. <laughs> when they talk about uh, developing these uh, new stories exclusives for yeah, Netflix, yeah. I think that's a really good avenue. We talk about exclusives not coming to Stadia, and that's a yeah. huge, uh, well, it's just a bummer, really. 
And Absolutely. I would like to see Netflix and the way they take on different studios for you know TV and movies. I think that could work out really well in this venue. I think it will. I think it'll work out well. I'm I'm now interested to see who else they're lining up because as of lately, yeah. dude, everybody's getting bought up, right? Like, like just everywhere you turn, EA's buying studios. Uh, we got something in today. I don't know if we'll get to it in time, but uh, PlayStation Studio bought another studio. So there's that to talk about. Like, there's just there's always these studios just now getting purchased and purchased, and it allows them to then focus and tap in and not not worry about okay, how are we gonna feed all of our people like how are we going to provide them with a paycheck right they now have that that mm. bank in the back of their mind going okay we can ease in a little bit easier now maybe at this point and hopefully just work on our game and get the game done especially with netflix because yeah. dude they got deep pockets oh yeah there's huge amount of funding available just look at what they put out every month well exactly yeah dude let's uh let's talk about some other f- weird funding situations going on here people can fly expands <laughs> to work on smaller games in new genres. Outrider Studio says it will work on double A games alongside triple A efforts. Efforts, I think is a key word there. Oh, Scott wants that's to a little worrying. <laughs> wants to have new releases uh every year starting in 2024. This comes from Brandon Sinclair over at gamesindustry.biz. People can fly and now it's a change in strategy that will see it begin to branch out into double A games and new genres alongside triple A shooter efforts. The Outriders Studio said that the AA games would have quality comparable to previous titles, but would characterize by a shorter development time, lower budget, and smaller scope. Dude, that doesn't sound all that appealing. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not certain that I'm excited <laughs> by that news. Um, no. This does follow up on their somewhat botched launch for uh, Outriders. Outriders, and that's really yep. unfortunate because... I think that game had a lot of potential and game unfortunately a lot of people were just pushed away and I liked it. I I I feel like that was because it came out of the oven a little bit uh, unfinished. The certain yeah. This doesn't exactly seem like a solution to that problem. Well, I think that's I th- this is okay. So here's where I'm at. Outriders didn't exactly hit the world by storm like they kind of hoped it would right i enjoyed it nate enjoyed it kyle enjoyed it we just couldn't pair up on the same console but in different generations right kyle was on the old xbox yeah. one nate and i are on next gen consoles every time we pair up kyle bounced right it was one of those situations server issue server issue server issue and yeah, just a couple other little bugs here and there this isn't a games of service we know that that's fantastic give us a game we have a game dude and now <laughs> you talk to people like my brother beat the game right like i beat the game it's the game is a solid shooter i had a ton of fun i'm hoping for an outriders 2 but yes because it's a cleaned up launch and just hope it goes right exactly kind of like that assassin's creed 1 to assassin's creed 2 change right everybody went whoa here we go and then now we get assassin's creed 22 but (laughs) <laughs> that's uh but with outriders i think what it and is 22 is, both in <laughs> year of release and number <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine uh, well we're getting Assassin's Creed in- infinity which i'm curious so all i mean i'm really curious about that one but either you way know, i'm trying to count them up in my head now there's uh oh dude there's like 13 there's 14 there, there is <laughs> yeah. quite a few Assassin's Creed titles yeah one day we'll have to do a special for the for the weekly show and you can we'll get into that one but anyways yeah. getting back to my, my point of outriders i don't think succeeded as well and because of that they're now downscaling in other situations and they're actually putting out there that they're looking to acquire other studios they already have seven studios okay oh wow but they're that looking seems... for for them dude i had no idea they had seven but they are no. then so because uh outriders being their triple a shooter didn't exactly hit the world on fire they want to take their turn and go when they want to release game after game after game at least have something every single year in a, at a smaller scale now phrasing it with lower budget and smaller scope doesn't sound that appealing really but no. if you take the indie approach i think with outriders and do a spin-off or do other smaller development games that will allow them to keep that money rolling, keep the funding going, and then hopefully allow, allow them the time that's going to be really needed to nail that AAA studio or that new AAA title. And then when that one crushes it, dude, then they have the next game and another game. And just transition back in. and Exactly. Yeah, 
it's it, it seems like it's it makes sense. It's a good strategy because they're increasing hit probability with yeah. you know, striking out in a lot of different directions, and hopefully something sticks because I was really impressed with Outriders, and it was uh, really just a drag. No, absolutely, it didn't Do, work out. I, I enjoyed Outriders, but either way, we'll we'll see what the future holds there for people can fly. And I think they, they have something. But, dude, let's move on to what's happening over the world in Valve. Could Valve be working on a standalone VR headset? Codename Deckard. This comes from Taylor Lyles over at IGN. Valve will be working on a standalone virtual reality headset, headset similar to the Oculus Quest and Quest 2. That's exciting. Spotted by YouTuber Brandon Lynch. Multiple references to a device codenamed Deckard have been found inside Valve's Steam VR code. Lynch notes that the information he found indicated multiple iterations of the headset exist, including a proof of concept version, which uh, was last updated in June. Dude, that's kind of exciting to see because, oh man, like you're tethered to your PC, which is, I think, to get the ball rolling for VR, it had to be that state of you know yeah. connectivity but now we need the horsepower well exactly but now with quest and quest 2 do we clearly don't like we do but we don't they were able to to upgrade upgrade so quickly and we've seen iteration of iteration of iteration of vr do we can cut the cable now right that's the point we're at now and if valve can get into that side as well the problem with valve dude all their units are like 12 to 1500 dollars Oh, that's expensive. And yeah, and you know if it has that wireless connection, it's going to be premium. I would make that assumption. You would and think so. I, I haven't played on a Quest I yet, have. but I know, I know that once I am untethered, it'll be like having a home phone. You just won't have a wire ever again. Well, that's just it, right? It kind of makes me nervous going over to PlayStation VR 2 because... We're going to be tethered oh, still. Yeah. There's one cable. And it's granted, it's only one cable. But, dude, when you come from the Quest and the Quest 2, like, I have the Quest 2. Steve's got the Quest 2. And we're free. We, we are completely free. I don't have to worry about wrapping myself in a cord or nothing. I think for uh, Valve to get into that situation, hopefully they can lower their price. Because the Quest 2, dude, it's like $400. So, <laughs> like, they can't be $1,000, $1,200 if you're going to try and compete with the Quest 2. We'll see what happens yeah. here, but it's pretty exciting to see Valve still iterating on VR and do Half-Life Alex on a wireless system. Oh, right? that would be nice. That's got to be the sweetest one to check out. I, of course, not played every VR game, but Half-Life yeah. Alex was it knocked it out staple. of the park. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Easily, right? But we got some more news. Dude, we talked about it yesterday. New World is not coming to console, at least not yet. This comes from Eddie muck over at GameSpot. i may have mucked up his last name <laughs> amazon's <laughs> recently released mmo new world is performing extremely well right now prompting some to ask the developers if the pc game might come to console at some point posting on twitter the studio said fans hoping to play new world on console are going to have to wait if it ever happens at all ouch Oh, Quote, yeah, I was curious myself. <laughs> yeah, me too, right? New World will be playable only on PC for the foreseeable future, end quote, the studio said. Dude, right now, Amazon, I think, is just happy that their game is up and running and everybody's enjoying yeah. it to the extent they are. Whether or not we get that on a console, I think there's a lot under the hood right now for them to just make sure it's up and running at a stable consistency without the backlog of server issues that they've currently had right now with New World. Mm -hmm. They've had huge success numbers with, a, with uh, what is it, 700,000 concurrent players and people still 400,000 in queue. <laughs> I was going to say, in. yeah, so, an extreme amount of people are just waiting to get in. So it, yeah. it makes sense that they don't really want to add more numbers to it without having the support to handle that it really you don't want to shoot yourself in the foot especially after finally having what seems to be a clean launch uh, they broke the guinness world record so yeah like that's not yeah, after, after that you already have gold medal you don't <laughs> have to put it. <laughs> exactly so i think they're doing just fine now let's see let them focus on the pc version hopefully one day i think if we get it dude at the earliest it'll be like two years from now yeah, it seems if it was just a proof of concept that was done yeah. shortly, uh, there's definitely going to be something coming on. Absolutely. Dude, we have PlayStation Studio just bought uh, Fire Sprite, okay? Well, Fire Sprite just bought 
Fabric Games. Uh, that's the latest acquisition. Now, a studio purchased by PlayStation just bought another studio. So the acquisition occurred in connection with Fire Sprite joining PlayStation Studios. This comes from Marie D'Alessandri over at GamesIndustry.biz. Fire Sprite has announced the acquisition of Manchester-based studio Fabric Games. The developer will join the PlayStation Studios group as Fire, Fire Sprite was itself recently acquired by Sony Interactive Entertainment. The announcement actually clarified that the acquisition occurred in connection with Fire Sprite joining PlayStation Studios. So it sounds like it was almost like a double studio purchase. Yeah, they must have had some sort of plan already in the works. And sounds uh, that way. PlayStation superseded it in a way, but yep. But still, that's pretty good. Uh, Fabric Games was founded in 2014 by Fire Sprite's managing director Jeremy Anchors. So there you go. Right. Oh, like, okay. There's yeah. the connection. Yeah. There it is. But uh, where are we for time? Do we have a lot today for game announcements? But you have one article left. So let's do that last one, I think, is what we should do. eh? Microsoft to allow third-party storefronts on Windows Store, Amazon, and Epic Games at the front of the line. Dude, does that seem a little weird to you? This one comes from uh, Daniel... Or, uh, Daniela Paradis over at Games Industry of Biz as well. Microsoft has updated its policy to allow third-party storefront apps onto its own store. In a blog post, the company unveiled that the third-party stores will have a product detail page that can be found via browsing just like other apps. Thoughts on that one, Scott? Yeah, is the, that does seem kind of strange. Is that right? does that mean I can get Steam that I can access through Xbox? <laughs> I don't expect to be playing Steam games on Xbox, but just no. having that functionality, I'm not I'm not quite certain I fully understand. But it was weird. Like, an open market with new apps, I, I don't see an issue really with that. No, I, I guess not. But I didn't expect like if you go to Apple. Apple A will never let Epic on. They won't even let Fortnite on there anymore. Yeah, that's but, <laughs> like you know what I mean. Like if you go to Google, they're not going to let you have the Apple Store on there. Like that's competition. Mm -hmm. So it, it just Microsoft trying to play with everybody. They kind of <laughs> scratching my head a little bit. <laughs> well, I'm just glad they don't include the uh, PlayStation Store, so I don't find myself longingly looking at Spider-Man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> dude, uh, they just need to put Game Pass over on Nintendo. Uh, let's, yes. Let's move on. <laughs> Dude, let's move on. What game announcements and releases do we have for today? Well, we have uh, a whole lot here. Sure do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm gonna see if I can hit the the highlights here of this okay. one. But there is survival over battle royale. A drop into a closed beta of the Cycle Frontier on September 30th. Hey, I remember the Cycle. Dude, that's a cool game, and they're still going. It was so a it's cool awesome. Game. Yeah. That's good. That is now starting tomorrow. Players can experience the transition from the original cycle into a high stakes survival shooter known as the Cycle Frontier. Very That's cool. cool. I want to see more about that. It, it seems to be a PvPVE yep. type of shooter, which is something I think we just talked about, actually. Yeah. And uh, I really hope that that works out well. I think they need to have some more competition into the Battle Royale if that is the focus. And Jaeger is a cool studio. The game's free to play, so uh, will be coming free to play when it does finally hit its initial launch date. But not sure exactly when that is. But right now, dude, they're just talking about a closed beta. So we will see. Yeah, well, hopefully that gets off the ground. Hopefully. What else? Now, we have? there's a new update for DayZ, which is interesting because I wasn't sure they were still working on that. But <laughs> it seems that that game is alive and well. This adds new contaminated areas, uh, a new rifle, and presumably a whole lot more. These uh, updates and DLC packs have been, well, quite busy. There's a lot of things to this game, so sure, I expect that that'll be uh, quite interesting for the people who are still playing. And I know there's lots. I want to check it out. I really do, but dude... Uh... It is so punishing. <laughs> yeah, it's punishing and creepy, so... I would love to say that I'd join you, but we would spend actually several hours just trying to find each other and, <laughs> yeah. and it all depends on your ability to read russian uh not very good <laughs> mine is coming along but still not very good <laughs> now we also have details revealed about the new season six coming to call of duty black ops cold war and hmm, let's see what we have here it is starting on october 7th 
Treyarch's blog post has revealed some details about the final zombie map that arrives with the launch of the new season. This will be called Forsaken, and it is a round-based zombies experience that will conclude the Cold War storyline of the CIA Requiem research team's effort to stop the Omega group. Okay, so that's getting deep into the storyline there. But yeah, <laughs> just, cool. just understand that there is quite a deep storyline to this, and it seems to be a games of service style of updating and seasonal content. So this is interesting. It's finally coming to a conclusion, at least this story arc. I suspect there will be more. You going to check out the zombies mode at all? I am, actually. It's been so long since I got into zombies. Yeah. Uh, since Black Ops 2, I believe. So, oh, wow. uh, yeah, I've been itching for one of those. There you go. <laughs> now, we do have some full releases today. And that would be Aeon Drive. And that is coming to the PlayStation 4, 5, Xboxes, all of them. <laughs> and the Switch and PC. Now, there's also Astria Ascending on the PlayStation 4, 5, Xbox One, XS, the Switch, and the PC. And Darksiders 3 makes its debut on Switch. Hey, I played that one. That was fun. It's on Stadia, too. Just saying. Yeah. And we have eFootball, as opposed to real-life football, 2022, and that is on the PlayStation 4, 5, Xbox One, XS, and PC. Lacking a Switch board there. And <laughs> Hot Wheels Unleashed. This caught our eye actually on announcement. This is I'm I'm curious to get into this one. That yeah. is available on PlayStation 4, 5, Xbox One, S, X, the Switch, and PC. That's it's very just about cool. almost a full lineup there. Dude, Hot Wheels. Like man, oh man. Um yeah. We that we need to play that game. There's no doubt about it. You know it. that list was so long I was waiting for Vita, but that's it doesn't oh. happen often. It does happen though. from time to time, but as of right now, uh, rest in peace, Vita. There's a few. Yeah, we had a release on 360, I think, yesterday. That was... <laughs> yeah, who's releasing that any on that still? No, that's funny. I'm still waiting to see Game Gear. Come no. on. <laughs> <laughs> There's Imposter Factory also releasing on PC. Rogue Lords as well on PC. My uh, sorry, The Last Friend on Switch and PC. And Unsighted on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, and the PC. There you go. Dude, that's not a bad lineup. Those are, we, uh, we talked about it yesterday, how we went from like no games to all of a sudden we're just bombarded with games. Yeah. Like, how do you... The, th- the biggest struggle for me, Scott, is how do you play half of this lineup for today? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there's so well, much. And, and I'm one who has a high chance of doing that, and I still look at these lists like, holy... My gamer score is high enough, though. I could take a break. Oh, okay. What's your, what's your gamer score at right now? I believe I'm at about a quarter million. That's impressive. That is impressive. <laughs> Obscene. I'd have to check on mine. I don't know where I'm at right now, but I'm nowhere near that. I was uh, I was over in the world of PlayStation for the longest time. I still am. Actually, I'm there often right now. I'm playing right now. I'm playing actually Kena Bridge of Spirits. So, oh, that's, that's yeah, dude, that's uh, yeah. Well, I touched on it yesterday. Yeah, I got a lot to say about that one when the time comes. But yeah, that one's cool for for me for the out of this list, dude. It is uh, it's Hot Wheels. I gotta play yep. Hot Wheels Unleashed. <laughs> yeah, I grew up as a Hot Wheel kid, so yeah, it, I'm long overdue to get back into that and try it out. And uh, I was a little surprised we didn't see our our game arrive, but we'll be finding where that is very <laughs> very shortly. Scott, that's gonna wrap up today's show, though. Everybody can check it out inside the game.ca podcast services and TV streaming networks around the globe. I'm Drew. That's Scott. We'll see everybody tomorrow inside the game.